So in we go with our patties. G'day all, Taz Daz here again. Welcome to my latest video. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm making beef and bacon patties. So we've got all our ingredients here. So we've got our big mixing bowl. We've got our chopping board for our onions. We've got our eggs. We've got our beef mince. We've got mixed herbs. We've got fruit chutney salt and pepper, onions, good old Aussie tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and our bacon pieces. And we've just got our measuring cup and our spoons to measure our ingredients. So basically it's a very simple recipe, very easy to make. So we take the majority of our ingredients here, put them into our bigger mixing bowl here, and then we mix it all up by hand. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to chop up our onions. Alright, so we've got two onions here. I've got one smallish one and one larger one. So two medium sized onions would be perfect. What I'm going to do is chop the onions and then we're going to put all the ingredients into our mixing bowl, mix it all together and then we'll have our patty mix, which we'll then put in the fridge for about an hour and then our patties will be ready to cook. So let's get these onions chopped up and I'll be right back. So I just like to peel off the first layer of the onion. It's a little bit of a waste, but not too much. And then we need to get all that skin off our chopping board. Here's the big onion here. So it is a very decent sized onion, that's for sure. And my knife is not the sharpest in the world. Probably a little bit like me, not the sharpest in the world. But hey. We're not Gordon Ramsay, we're not gourmet, we're just down to earth cooking with Daz today, as he struggles to even peel the skin part of the onion. <laughs> oh dear, technical difficulties again. So we'll chop them up, not fine, but not too coarse either, because you want them to be able to actually cook in the patty as you cook in the patty never known the right way to chop an onion probably got it completely wrong again as i said i'm no gordon ramsay though here we go chopping up the onion very exciting stuff so very it's simple Tasty little recipe for you to try. I don't know, do you have patties in the part of the world that you come from? We also call them um, rissoles. Some people call them rissoles in Australia, some people call them patties. That's probably a um, cultural thing from the different parts of Australia that you might be in. So a nice bit of there we go, that's all uh, chopping up nicely now. A couple of bits to go, a little bit of skin, get away skin, we don't want you. There we go. Just the last bit of onion now, so it's a good amount of onion. We're making quite a few patties today. We've got a kilo of mint. All right. Some little bits there and I'm not crying <laughs> so let's get that onion there obviously make sure that your hands are nice and clean before doing this so we've got our big mixing bowl here 
So we'll throw the onion in. We've got one kilogram of, we're using just the regular beef mince. So it has a nice amount of fat in it as well. So that all goes into our mixing bowl. Make sure that you remove the, uh, the moisture thing out of it. We don't want to be tasting that. So we've got our bacon. So that goes in too. All right, there we go. So we're going to wash our hands after doing the mince. And now we're going to add about, about half a teaspoon of mixed herbs. So just throw a bit of that in there. There we go. Probably a little bit more than half a teaspoon. It's just a matter of playing it by how you like your taste. So probably one about three big heaping tablespoons, a little bit more of the fruit chutney brand of your preference none of this is sponsored so we've got our fruit chutney that can go into the sink we also need a bit of salt salt and pepper to taste obviously i like ground pepper a lot so i'll probably put a little bit more in but just do it to taste, you know, try it once, see how it goes. You can always adjust your recipe for the next time. And we're going to have a few squirts of the good old tomato sauce, which most people will add to their risoles or patties afterwards anyway. And as a binder, we've got our breadcrumbs. Don't want too many breadcrumbs or it'll ruin the flavour. So we'll go about half a cup. About a little bit over. Oh, that's about right. There we go. In there as well. A little bit more. Just there we go. And now the fun part. To get down and dirty with our risole mix so we've got everything no we haven't got our eggs that would have been a bit of a failure you've got to have your eggs to help bind all your ingredients so one egg and our second egg there there we go cracked like a professional who said i wasn't gordon ramsay now, you can either do it with a spoon or after washing your hands, make sure your hands are very nice and clean before doing this because you don't want to be spreading germs or <laughs> putting nasties into your, into your patties. So now let's get in here. Oh, look at that. Sorry to all your vegetarians and vegans. You're probably cringing right now at what I'm doing. Please change the channel. <laughs> all right. So we're going to give it a really good thorough mix to get all those ingredients combined it's a bit like and this sounds no i won't say it i was going to say it sounds it's a bit like playing with play-doh or something but you can't treat your food like that so you've got to treat it with a bit of respect so you can see here now there we go we can actually shape up our mince patties there we go 
There is our first mint patty. But what we're going to do is we're actually, now that we've combined everything, smells quite nice. Getting the aroma of the fruit chutney, that's for sure. Um, we're going to now refrigerate this for a little bit to let it combine. So once it's all refrigerated, we'll be back and we'll form up our little patties and we will cook them in the fry pan. So see you in about an hour or in YouTube time in about five seconds. Okay, before I actually put it in the fridge, what I'm gonna do is cover it over with some glad wrap. That way it doesn't stink the fridge out and it doesn't get any of the other smells, if there are any, or well, there shouldn't be, of other items in the fridge into your patty mix. There we go. Okay, be back shortly. Alrighty, and we're back. So our Rissol slash patty mix has been sitting in the fridge. You can see there it's got a bit of condensation from it. So it's cooled down nicely and should have been Nice, it's nice and bound together now. So I've got our plate, smelling very oniony. Um, we've got our fry pan here, got our plate. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make up our patties. So make them to the size that you will want to eat them basically. So you can make them as big or as little as you want, as thick or as thin as you want. That's the, uh, the beauty of this recipe. So there we are. Nice patty there. Lots of onion in it. So with this mix, we're going to get quite a few patties out of it. So it's a nice, hearty, cheap meal to make. Probably want to keep them as uniform to the same size as possible. So they all cook in the same kind of time. So in the background, I don't know if you can hear the pot bubbling away, but we've got mashed potatoes on the boil, um, some carrots and some steamed pumpkin as well. So a very hearty winterish kind of dish. So what we'll do is we'll make a few up and then we'll transfer them over to the fry pan. So obviously once we uh, do that, we're going to turn the fry pan on. We're also going to wash our hands again. Alright, so then we've got our towel, so we'll wipe our hands. Fry pan on, we're going to put it on to a, little, a medium heat. So we'll actually take the lid off. So we've got a non-stick fry pan. So that they don't stick into the pan itself. So we'll move the camera over a little bit. There we are. And also we're going to get our spatula so we can flip them over. So, okay, let's get our spatula out. It's in this cupboard, so give me one sec. All right, so I've just got a plastic spatula because it's a non-stick fry pan. So in we go with our patties. You can hear them sizzling away nicely. So we've got some good sized patties there. Let's make a few more. So what we can do now is make our patty and transfer them directly into the fry pan. There we are, a couple more, I reckon. So we've used a bit over half of our mix so far. 
and we've got two, four, six, eight nice big size patties. So all up, it's probably going to make about 16 patties. So just going to check out my mashed potatoes in the background after I wash my hands. Always wash your hands. I always make sure that I wash my hands after handling any raw meat or anything like that, especially chicken. So you can see the steam's coming off them, so they're cooking nicely. And that's the benefit also of the... You can see there the... Uh, the non-stick fry pan. So they're coming along nicely, the potatoes are coming along nicely, the carrots and the pumpkin is coming along nicely. Let's get a nice view on those patties there. Oh. There we go. So I might actually turn it up a bit, get them cooking away very nicely, there we go. So while they're cooking, I'm just going to make some more. So I've still got, as you can see there, quite a bit of the patty mix left. So we're gonna get probably another eight or so patties out of this mix. So it's gonna feed, it's a very nice feed. And they're sizzling away nicely. The potatoes are boiling away nicely. Um, really nice, simple, hearty meal. If you give it a go, let me know down in the comments what you think. So I've got another two, four, five. So I've got another six patties here. They're a little bit bigger than the others, but that's okay. So we're gonna have plenty of leftovers. And our mixing bowl is empty now. Just gonna wash my hands again. As you can tell, I'm pretty prestigious about washing my hands and we're going to give these a flip so you can see they're nicely cooking smelling really good now if they start to break apart a bit that's okay that's part and parcel of cooking these you'll get some random bits of onion So we'll turn it down a bit again. They looking good, they're looking good to me. You can see there the lamp, random little bits falling off here and there, that's okay. That's not a problem. Now some people like to push their patties down, I don't like to do that. The reason why I don't like to do that is it then releases the juices out of them. So, getting a nice sear on them like this keeps all those juices and the nice, the fattiness and that into the patties, which I really like. So they're not the healthiest thing in the world, but, you know, I think I'd rather eat these than a McDonald's burger. There's a lot more flavour in them. So we'll let them cook for a little bit longer. Um, and we'll be back.
So you can see here, that's another plate full of the patties out of that mix. So overall, it's not an expensive recipe at all. If you've already got most of the ingredients, the most expensive part is the, the beef mint, um, which was about, it was $9 for the kilo. And then we also have the bacon bits, which was about $2 for half a packet of the bacon bits. And then the other stuff we already had, so it's just the breadcrumbs and that, which isn't uh, overly expensive. Most people will have it in their fridge or in their pantry anyway. Well, I'm loving the sound of those sizzling patties there. They sound awesome. And you can see the them bubbling away nicely, the bits of fat. That's why I'd rather use the just the basic mints rather than the the lean mints. Lean mints wouldn't work well with these patties at all, I don't think. So is it making you hungry? What do you reckon? Do they look good? I think they do. So we're going to have these tonight. We're going to have gravy, mashed potato, steamed pumpkin and carrots. Um, really, as I said, nice, healthy, hearty kind of meal. So this would be a typical kind of meal for us, or for me, on a Sunday night. Don't try to eat takeaway as much anymore. Um, it's just getting too much. It's too expensive and, uh, yeah, not good for the waistline, which isn't great anyway. So let's give these a flip again. They're look, looking pretty good. Whoops. He's kind of fallen apart a little, so we're going to turn him down now. So it's possible they might have needed a little bit more egg and a little bit more breadcrumbs, but that's okay. So he's kind of disintegrated, but once you get it on the plate, and you smother them in gravy and you mix it up with your mashed potato and that, it's really not going to matter. So what we might do is actually put the lid on for a little bit. So the reason why we do that is it will steam up and help cook in the inside of them without burning the outside anymore. Alright, so... We'll leave it there for the minute, and once they're all cooked and all plated up, we'll be back. Alrighty, so here we are. We've got our beef patties, we've got our steamed pumpkin, our boiled carrots, and our mashed potato. Yum, yum, yum. And here we've got our gravy. I'm actually using chicken gravy today because that's pretty much all I had in the cupboard so let's pour this over Ooh, how good does that look mashed potato and gravy yum do you like to pour your gravy over all your veggies there we go some real home cooked hearty food is that a nice looking meal let me know in the comments would you eat that or not that's my tea i'm looking forward to it that's for sure all right so that's going to be it for this cooking with dad's video it's been a while since i've done one but that's our beef and bacon home cooked patties and we've got the mashed potato the steamed pumpkin and the boiled carrots to go as a complement. Really tasty, nice and cheap meal to make. And um, let me know if you try it and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload any new videos in the future. 
Thanks again, and thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you on the next one. Bye.